Happy Halloween everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Seek and Destroy. And today we are going to take a look at a Marvel series that is very rare. Actually, I don't think they've ever reprinted this in any other form other than the original comic books. And uh, if you're out there, Marvel, someone's watching, please put this in a trade paperback or something maybe next year for Halloween uh, to get these out there. I don't know if there's some issue with maybe why they can't reprint it. If there's a, you know, because there is a connection here to another company called Chaos Comics. Um, but I'll get into that in a second. I first want to show off the book itself, The Supernaturals. Uh, this is written by Mark Andreco and art by Ivan Reyes, who went on to Green Lantern fame after this, and Mark Andreco, who went on to write a bunch of great stuff from Marvel, DC, TV, you know, movies, everything. Uh, Mark's an awesome guy, and I had the pleasure of meeting him numerous times and hanging out with him at Golden Apple Comics in Los Angeles. And he's just the coolest dude ever. And uh, a big, big shout out to him um, who did Love is Love and he did all these other great books uh, and is still out there kicking butt. And I wish Mark the best always. I've always loved his stuff and I've always loved his company and enjoyed talking to him about comic books. He's a very passionate guy and he was kind enough to sign all these for me. He's like, I can't believe you have these. And I'm like, yeah, man, I love this book. Uh, this is really cool. It has Johnny Blaze Ghost Rider in it. It's got Jericho Drum, who uh, is Brother Voodoo. And this, I believe, was one of my, you know, first introductions to not only Jericho Drum, although I think I've seen other versions of Brother Voodoo in comics, but never really locked into him as a character um, until this. Uh, and then also you have Satana in here, Black Cat, Werewolf by Night, Grey Gargoyle, Ghost Rider, um, and, and there's a bunch of other Jack-O-Lantern, a different version of Jack-O-Lantern. And what is neat about this book is that it takes place in another reality, another multiverse storyline. Um, so I guess for whatever reason, they couldn't make this set in the Marvel Universe. I think the main reason is, is because Marvel at this time had done Heroes Reborn and all the superheroes were sucked into, you know, a, a, a little, you know, mystical world that, uh, or supernatural world or whatever that uh, Franklin Richards created. But he put them all in this, you know, in their own pocket universe um, to kind of protect them after their battle with Onslaught. And that had happened like a year or two before this book had come out. And so I think they wanted to go off of that story and, and build off of that, but maybe because that got undone and the heroes came back to the Marvel Universe, that tampered with maybe the pitch of this. So they just set it on a different world where a different event happens called the Chaos Event, and it sucks in all the heroes into a different pocket dimension, or we don't know, we actually never find out what happened to them, and it just leaves a handful of mystical heroes left of the Marvel Universe you know, on, the, on their planet. Um, so not a lot of heroes out there, and the ones that are out there are mystical, like Doctor Strange, Wong, Brother Voodoo, and all the characters you see here. So this first preview book was really neat that they put out because um, this kind of gives you the introduction. And I mentioned earlier about another company. There was this company that really blew up in the late 90s, um, or yeah, late 90s, uh, and they were called Chaos Comics. And they had like Evil Ernie and all these like really cool characters. Well, the makers of Chaos Comics, like Brian Polito, he was asked to come over and do something at Marvel. So they put this book together to kind of give you the background of like, he's like, hey, you know, when I was growing up reading comic books, I really liked the supernatural characters of the Marvel Universe. So when Marvel approached us, because Chaos Comics, I think, had been out for a couple years at this point, and they were making a big splash on the indie scene, like a lot of indie companies were in the 90s. And, you know, Marvel was like, hey, we, we like some of your stuff. Would you like to do something for us? Uh, kind of like when they did Heroes Reborn, um, they had, you know, the image guys kind of come back and the Wildstorm guys come back to, you know, Marvel and do some Heroes Reborn stuff. So they had like Jim Lee on Fantastic Four and uh, Rob Liefeld on Captain America and so on and so forth. So this was kind of like in the ballpark of that thinking like, hey, let's bring in these indie guys and let's have them put a stamp on something in the Marvel Universe. So unfortunately, this book, I guess, didn't get as much recognition as I feel like it should have because I think it's a really solid story. So the different take on these characters, so Brian Polito breaks it down in this tour book. Um, this basically is him going, here's how we were approached by Marvel. And he's telling the story of like how they got involved and why he wanted to bring Mark and Draco in and the Doctor Strange book he had worked on around this time, which is amazing. And a lot of other stuff that Mark was doing, he was on the rise. And so he was like, yeah, Brian Polito was like, we gotta bring him in to write this. And Ivan Reyes was also growing as an artist at that time. And so they wanted to involve him too. So this is just a book about all the characters, Jericho Drum, Jack Russell, Werewolf by Night, um, and he's breaking down who they are. Jericho Drum in this universe is a music producer, a rap music producer, who also had put out albums, you know, in his, in his younger years, and is now a producer. Uh, he still puts out, you know, hit tracks from time to time, 
but he's mainly producing a lot of uh, up and coming rappers. Um, so that's his day life. And then at night, he's Brother Voodoo. Um, and his backstory is told in the first issue, where it actually is right here. And each of these issues, what's really neat about them is they actually come with Halloween masks. And this was like, a, I think, a weekly series. It came out in October, I think, of 1998. And they released one issue a week so that every week you had a chance to get one of these masks. There was five total because number one, issue one, had a variant cover and there was a different mask in that one. But I didn't get the variant cover. I just had this cover. So I only have four out of the five masks. So maybe one day I'll track down the variant uh, that was uh, harder to find. So then again, Mark, thanks for signing these. Uh, so awesome. Um, so the book, it starts off with Jericho Drum and his brother Daniel. And, uh, and you know, his brother Daniel's older. He's like, you know, barely a teenager, like 12, 13. And he's taken Jericho, who is probably like eight or nine years old, brings him to a cemetery. All these candles are lit everywhere. And he's like, look, we're going to do this. We're going to set this, uh, you know, cast this spell. Because uh, his brother, his or their dad was like, you know, into voodoo and stuff. But he tried to protect people with his powers. Um, but for some reason, Daniel wants to bring, you know, Jericho away from their family. And he's like, come on, let's go out here and let's do this. And he causes a, uh, you know, casts a spell, a ritual that sucks in all the heroes and then also uh, causes Daniel to disappear as the one who, you know, actually um, tried to start this, uh, you know, event and, and plan the, the curse or whatever he was doing. You know, he had the ritual going on. So he got sucked into the event as well. And that was known as the chaos event because obviously the chaos comics were the people who were behind this book. So they decided to put in a little chaos comic nod by calling this the chaos event. And it sucks in Captain America and all the other heroes um, leaving just the mystical heroes left on the planet Earth. Um, but everyone's kind of different ages because, like I said, this is a, a different universe. So Johnny Blaze is like 19 years old and he does like extreme sports, everything from, bi you know, bicycle to motorcycle to skateboarding to snowboarding. Um, so he was very much like that, which there was a lot of that in the 80s and 90s. Um, and then, like I said, Jericho Drum was a, is a music producer and rapper. So you have him, you know, his daily life. Black Cat is like, you know, working for a, a Democratic politician in New York, um, but she made a deal with Jericho Drum to get, you know, uh, lucky powers, I guess, so, so she can, uh, you know, manipulate good luck and bad luck around her. So, uh, so that's how kind of she gets involved in the story because she's almost like a kind of a protege of his. Um, and then you also bring in Jack Russell, who is a big Bruce Lee fan, so he's doing martial arts, which that was another big thing in the 80s and 90s, was young people getting into martial arts, young men especially. Um, so they, they kind of tackle in all that. So I kind of like how Mark does that with the story. He, it brings everyone in. You have uh, um, Isaac Christians. He's in Ohio. You have Johnny Blaze in Miami uh, with Satana. Um, and they're at a circus and she's doing like a magic show. And he shows up to do like an extreme sports thing. Um, and so, and he's hitting on her obviously, but then he has to turn into Ghost Rider to help her because she gets outnumbered by demons. So like I said, it is a lot to go through here. I'm not gonna go through the whole story, but I just wanna show off some of this stuff because I think it's cool. And I really wish Marvel would maybe reprint this at some point, put this in some kind of trade paperback, something just to get it out there. You know, you got Ivan Reyes artwork. I mean, Ivan Reyes drawing Ghost Rider and Satana, like uh, not Zatanna, Satana. Um, and so you have these two who are kind of kindred spirits. He's hitting on her and she's not liking it, but you find out they have more in common than you think because he made a deal with the devil to get his powers. And she made a deal with an, a demon who was trying to ascend to heaven to get her powers. So yeah, cool stuff. I mean, there's a lot of cool twists in the storyline. And the big thing they do is they bring in Jack-O-Lantern as the main villain, uh, which I thought was really cool. Um, so, uh, and it's not like, you know, a jack-o'-lantern you've seen before. Uh, it's, a, it's a different take on jack-o'-lantern for sure. And this one is definitely very mystic as well. Um, so, yeah, so the chaos event that happened at the beginning with Jericho and his brother, now it's 13 years later, demons are attacking the earth. It's the 13th anniversary on Halloween of the original chaos event and all these demons are attacking and these heroes have to unite to fight jack-o'-lantern and his hordes of demons that he's summoning from uh, the other realms. And, uh, and, and hell itself, obviously. So now that the heroes have been wiped off the map 13 years ago, this is a very different world. In fact, none of the team members want to do anything heroic. So when Dracula shows up and Frankenstein and all these characters, you know, Johnny Blaze and Satana, like they, they kind of don't want to do anything heroic. They're like, especially Johnny Blaze, he's like, dude, all the heroes, Captain America, Hulk, Thor, like they all got wiped out for trying to do the right thing. The X-Men, like everyone's gone. Uh, Spider-Man, like nobody's around. It's just the mystical characters. And then when they go try to get the help of Doctor Strange and Wong, 
they have been taken out too. So Jerrica Drum finds the Eye of Agamotto and uses that to help unite the team and battle Jack-o'-lantern. Um, you know, so yeah, it's just really fun time and it, really cool issues, really cool um, artwork. I love the artwork and the masks. You know, there's a Jericho drum mask in the final issue. The only downside is, is I wish they put the masks in the dead center of the comic book. Um, that would have just been much better. Instead, they're like in the middle of uh, like pages. So you have like 10 pages and then the mask and then 10 pages and then the other side of the mask and then 10 pages to the end of the book. Um, so you would have to completely disassemble this book, take out the staples on the sides to get the mask out, and then have to restaple the comic book, which would obviously obliterate the value of these things. Now, and I don't know if they're ever gonna increase in value, but I just know from reading you know, my old journals and stuff like that, that this was a book that meant something to me. Um, and which makes sense, because when I look at other books that were big influences on me in the 90s, especially the late 90s, Obviously, Ghost Rider, but that book was ending. You had Crimson, which is another great uh, book by Humberto Ramos and Brian Augustine. That was a big influence on me. You had books like this. Um, anything supernatural really pulled me into the universe of Marvel. And, it, you know, Blade, you know, that movie had just come out. So, you know, I don't know if you'll ever get a chance to read this. You would have to find this in dollar bins or somewhere, you know, or online Mile High Comics or eBay or something. You'd have to find them out there because I don't think they exist digitally. I don't think they exist. There's not a, a trade paperback form of them. But like I said, if anyone at Marvel is, uh, you know, if you're listening, if you're watching, please find a way to like reprint this as a trade and release it like Halloween or something of 2023 or 2024, whenever you see this message. Uh, because I thought this was a cool story that involved a lot of what many would call D-list Marvel characters and bring them all together. Maybe some of them C-list, but to me, like this felt like an A-list team. And as cringy as some of the dialogue gets, um, it, the story overall really pulled me in and there's an arc to it. So it, it doesn't, you know, there, maybe some of the guys are a little cringy at first, but as the stakes get higher and higher and as the chances of them, you know, succeeding through this get smaller and smaller, they start wising up and becoming the heroes that we all know that they are deep down. So uh, yeah, and, and, they're, and they're heroes that are like, with a flaming skull and a werewolf and a giant gargoyle who's kind of like the hulk of the team you know and uh it's and a witch you know it's it's they got everything and a voodoo priest and brother voodoo um just a great book so if you have any questions if you do want spoilers we can talk about those down in the comments so let me know your comments and your thoughts and your questions down below and as always we'll continue the conversation down there so if you don't want spoilers avoid the comment section because we're probably going to dive right into that so thank you so much for watching the show as always like share subscribe all that fun stuff and thank you for supporting this channel for the past six seven years since i've been making content and it's it's been a real pleasure and uh, and we got many more videos and more content to make coming up for sure so happy halloween be safe and i'll see you soon peace